we began our consideration of the nature of fairy tales, or as they're called in, in German, the Märchen, that is to say the stories, and because there are no fairies in fairy tales, you may have noticed, uh, it's sort, sort of a misnomer in English, and to reflect on why a group of adults would uh, pay attention to something that uh, historically has been relegated to children, and to recognize that um, one of the reasons why we look at fairy tales is because it gives us clues as to what's happening in the spontaneous and dynamic processes of the psyche. I mean, the best analogy would be dreams, of course. You don't consciously make up your dreams, and yet clearly they're the product of your own life and your own psychological reality. And clearly they speak to aspects of your experience, even if they are sort of uh, obscure or, or, or uh, symbolic in ways that are puzzling or even threatening to the ego. So we'd have to say one of the ways of figuring out what's going on inside of me, uh, outside the sphere of consciousness, is to pay attention to my dreams. So in a certain way, you could say the fairy tales or the tales, the stories, represent portraits of the dynamic processes of the psyche as they spring from either individual psyches or from the tribal imagination, after which they get processed through the culture, through the ego, in the same way that when we try to remember a dream, and maybe write it down and perhaps in, uh, report it to someone else. And, and even as we begin to interpret it, it already begins to pass through the screens of consciousness and it begins to be altered and shaped and directed. So the, the, the stories come from archetypal sources, that is to say the deeply symbolic and generative patterns within our own psyche, but they often take on the patina or the characteristics of, of local time and place. So. Uh, in, in those particular stories, you will see references which are clearly European in character because this collection is derived essentially from the experience of medieval Europe. And at the same time, we'll see there, as I suggested briefly last night, the characters in some way are anonymous. It's rare that they even have names. What they represent is aspects of psychological reality. What they represent is the embodiment of certain uh, energies or sig uh, aspects of some significance that's uh, dramatized. Uh, Jung said once one of the best ways to discern what is happening in the unconscious of the tribe is to examine its myths. That is to say, those dynamically charged images that have the power to move and to shape people.